Hello everyone and welcome to Admitad Affiliate Interviews. My name is Eugenia and I am a Marketing Manager at Admitad Affiliate. And this is my colleague Jane. She is a Business Development Manager at Admitad Affiliate in our UK team. Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. We would like to introduce our today's guests from Bravo Voucher. They are Chris, who is a Partnership and Growth uh, manager in the UK and um, Rock, who is an account manager in the UK. So in general, Bravo Voucher is a part of Bravo Savings Network that specializes in promoting different voucher, different coupons and codes uh, to the consumers who shop online and help them to save their money. So currently Bravo Savings Network operates in 10 different countries across Europe and in the USA. Thank you very much for that information. And now let's say hello to our today's guest. So uh, as my colleague told me, here is Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, how are you doing? All right, it's all good. Thank you. And you? Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. And here is the account manager from uh, Bravo Voucher, Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Ian. If you want to hear some useful tips from our affiliate monsters, Chris and Rob, please be patient and watch this video till the very end. Okay, so Chris and Rob, first of all, I would like to know, um, when did you actually start working with Admitad Affiliate? Okay, so I came on board with um, Bravo Voucher back in February 2020. Um, and I think as a, as a business, we were working with Admitad in some of our markets, um, but very little business really happening in the UK with you guys. So I guess our relationship goes back as far as 2017, um, but I'd say um, it hasn't really grown to its current level um, in terms of revenue and the strength of our partnership um, until more recently. Um, and that's been very much down to the quality of the account management we've enjoyed Jane um, and and that's and the level of engagement we've had and that's really been like uh, a, a big factor in in bringing us up to where we are today we're really pleased to hear that what about you Rob I yeah I mean I came on board uh, Bravo Voucher as well um, but later on so I originally joined in May of 2020 I originally joined in the content department and then I made the switch to sales later on in the year around August and obviously by that point, um, we were already integrated with Admitad and uh, we had a kind of working relationship. But uh, I think Jane took over from your predecessor around the same time. And then from then we've kind of gone from strength to strength and just seen kind of our integration with Admitad, not just in, you know from the technical side, but also kind of account management and just general, you know, re the relationship has strengthened since that point to where we are today. Chris, can I ask you this question as well? How long have you been in the affiliate marketing? Oh, okay. So I hate to say I've uh, I've been in affiliate marketing since around 2007, and um, which is obviously quite a long time. Uh, and I started originally um, working for a network that doesn't exist anymore uh, called DGM or Deal Group Media. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, they were they were pretty big at the th in in their day, uh, but uh, they we that sort of didn't stop functioning. Let's say in 2010, um, and uh, I really got into it by accident um, because I was working at um, in newspaper um, marketing and sales uh, up until that point, and a, a friend of mine moved across into affiliates and and sort of poached me and recruited me over. Uh, so that was how I started it. And I'll be honest, I'd never heard of affiliate marketing up to that point. Um, but it was obviously only seven years oldish anyway um, at that point, but it was just not on my radar whatsoever. Um, so it was completely new to me when I, when I fell into it back then. Wow. It sounds like uh, it was kind of a happy accident for actually both of you, right? This affiliate marketing thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, my my kind of like introduction to affiliate marketing is similar to Chris's. Like, it wasn't something that I ever planned on doing. I don't have uh, before I joined this. I didn't have any type of marketing background. I didn't have any type of uh, business background easier. Like my previous job before I studied was actually like a scuba diving instructor in Honduras. So it's quite a dramatic change from that. But you know, it's something that you can almost learn by doing. So I think. 
you know, it, it worked out in the end, let's say. Wow, that sounds interesting, right? Quite unexpected. <laughs> okay, yeah. but um, I think every story should have like a difficult part in it. And I would like to ask you, what was the difficult challenge that you've came across in your affiliate marketing career? Uh, I was like, quite lucky because I came into that business in a relatively senior role. Um, so I was, I was marketing director at, uh, at DGM back then. So obviously showing my age a bit there. Um, but obviously there's always challenges around these things. I mean, the, the network I was working for um, going bust was, was a bit of a challenge. Um, and there's <laughs> been various times since then. I was lucky enough after that to, um, to work for um, a, an affiliate agency um, called Nonstop Consulting. Um, that also doesn't doesn't exist anymore, <laughs> so it's <all> slightly <laughs> hard to uh, reference these things. Um, but it was it was a, it was very well known in Germany, and so I opened their office in the UK. Um, and obviously, that starting a, a new business and a new market is is in itself quite challenging. Um, but we we managed to get it off the ground and, and win some clients and get that motoring and build a team up. So that was good. Um, you know, there are always these these challenges day to day. I think, but I suppose what the takeaway from any of these things is that I will always say to Rob, every day is a school day. So uh, you know, you're, you're always learning. There's always something new to learn in affiliate. It's such a broad spectrum of activity going on. It covers so many different business models, um, and you're working in so many different sectors, um, especially on the publisher side. Um, or any any side really, you know, you guys have, have got obviously multiple publishers, multiple sectors. Um, so there's always something you need to learn. So I think the thing is just to try and uh, keep an open mind about what's happening in the landscape, you know, and and keep on top of everything and appreciate that there are a lot of moving parts. Um, and uh, you know, I look to the, you guys as networks a lot of the time to give to give me the information that, that we need to to keep abreast of everything that's going on. That sounds like an inspiring story of success. Uh, what about you, Rob? What kind of um, challenges have you encountered? My kind of experience is a bit different to Chris's. Obviously, Chris is much more advanced in his affiliate marketing journey, let's say, and I'm at the other end of the spectrum. I've only been in affiliate marketing for you know almost a year now. Um, and I think Chris has touched in it already, the fact that affiliate marketing is such a uh, kind of broad field and it touches on so many different aspects <laughs> um, that sometimes it's difficult to get your head around all of the terminology. You know, you, you're, you need to look at lots of different channels and within those channels, the terminology is, is quite different. So, you know, one of the main problems that I had getting my head around right at the start was just all of the acronyms. Uh, there's a lot of kind of technical jargon and stuff like that that um, you need to get your head around at the start. Um, but luckily, like nowadays, there's loads of good kind of online resources. And, you know, the Advertad, like Online Academy is also obviously a really good resource that people should check out as well. It's something that really helped me learn. It's very informative. What I should say is also that, like, um, from an account management point of view, like, although it's extremely broad, like, um, affiliate marketing is like a good field for people to get into if they kind of feel that they're more of a generalist. So you can have your fingers in lots of different pies and not necessarily be like a specialist in any of them, but you can still, you know, really um, have like a successful career and really do well, even if you're not kind of like all into one track, if you see what I mean. Your story shows everyone that self-studying really helps in this sphere, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's really nice that you mentioned the Admitat Academy because uh, we believe that uh, that it is one of the uh, biggest advantages of our company, and, and we hope it helps both advertisers and uh, publishers to learn something new. Uh, talking about the advertisers, probably you have worked uh, with different kinds of advertisers. Uh, what are the brands, the merchants you actually prefer to work with? Who is your perfect advertiser? I'm probably not going to uh, call out any actual brands uh, because, you know, obviously travel in, in some certain sectors, travel, fashion, retail, um, you know, for all of us, these are the brands that, that obviously do well. Um, I think there are so many brands and there are so many different factors around all this. Uh, 
our our favorite sort of advertiser is one that is really prepared to engage with us um you know there are lots of brands out there that don't um and you know we have them on the site and we do occasionally try and reach out to them um to work more closely with them uh, and there are a few that are very very good at coming back to us and developing a relationship with us um and those are the brands that we see having the best growth stories you know going from um just joining the site to really becoming uh, a big part of our business uh so uh that regular communication being willing to get on the phone with us um and starting a dialogue so that we can work with them to understand what their business requirements are and what's available to us you know which levers are available to us to work with um those are our favorite brands and that that can be from any sector really and any size because we have some very big brands that that do okay but could do do an awful lot better and we have some quite small brands um that just because they've engaged with us have have gone much bigger um, than you might have thought they would do considering where they are in their sort of online or affiliate journey as far as i understand the size of a company doesn't matter at all but the industry do you actually can work like with any interest industry for example like travel companies uh, banks and uh, uh, online retailers just anyone yeah i mean we don't we don't really have any limitations on who we work with again like i think the most important thing isn't necessarily which vertical and which category they're in it's just their willingness to kind of uh speak to us because um obviously we have like a wide view of different affiliate programs in lots of different verticals and we know that they're kind of like perfect fix it's not just you if you apply this strategy then it's going to work so you know we need to we need to speak to brands on like a one on one basis on a case by case basis and um have the time and engagement to work out uh what works for each brand so that kind of frees us up in some aspects and it means that we don't work with any uh brands in particular or we don't want to work with any types of brands who are in this vertical or that vertical um it's just a matter of having that uh communication and finding out what works for each brand and sometimes that takes time and it obviously takes a lot of communication and a lot of flexibility from both parties as well but if we are talking about the such kind of um brands uh from for example from the adult uh, adult type you know or from gambling mm-hmm. what about those advertisers what do you think about cooperating with them We we don't have any limitations regarding that. We have a lot of what you would consider like um adult brands on site and a lot of them do extremely well. Um you know, people are looking for those type of discount codes and if they're looking for those type of discount codes, we want to have them on site. So kind of in that aspect, we're not going to you know, square off that vertical just uh just for, you know, any kind of other reason. I do understand that you like you're ready to work with any kind of advertiser but I have another question and um when it comes to choosing uh, one particular like affiliate program what are the main factors that you pay attention to mm, Chris I would like to hear your answer first <clears throat> Okay so obviously having said that we we work with anybody um which we you know we genuinely will because there's always there's always a way um to to work with it with any advertiser that there are clearly going to be um brands that are really going you know going to take off um under their own steam um so i guess if we if we're going to look at it like that then we would be looking at sector um so you know we we know that you know travel before the covid pandemic was our biggest sector and we all sort of hope that it'll it'll come back and and play a big role in our business please yeah um so you know travel re- general retail fashion expect fashion's it's been really um you know seen huge growth during during the whole pandemic period even though people can't go out you know they've been through phases of buying much better leisure wear <laughs> and then and now they're getting back into re- you know re- refreshing their wardrobes again uh, so f- fashion just keeps on growing um so you know we will look at things like the sector obviously um because you know we know they'll do well brand awareness is is quite important um because if people don't know about the brand then they're not looking for the brand and if they're not well known then we want them to be have to have the sort of tools in place to invest with us so that we can give them that brand exposure on site 
um, you know, it's very small brands that come in and they buy into the CPA model, but think that there isn't going to be any further requirement. Um, that that's harder to work with for us. Um, so traffic levels um, in terms of people who are looking are very important. Um, and CPA, you know, again, it's a, it's the core of what we do, um, and um, it needs to be competitive. You know, that there is if someone comes into the into the market and they don't have a competitive CPA compared to a similar merchants, especially if it's not as well known, um, you know, that CPA has got to do the shouting for them a little bit. Um, so we also want, want merchants to be realistic with their CPAs and keep them where they are and not reduce them as well. That's good. Um, and um, I suppose the other side of that is is once we've got them on site, that's, that's one side of it, one side of the story. We then want to look and see how well it's going to do long term. You know, can we sustain it? So we once we have a brand on site, we're looking then to see things like rejection rates, you know, because it's, it's disbonding for us to uh to to have a brand that seems to be doing very well um and then we find out that um that we've been de-duped against another channel and 80 percent of their sales have been deleted and it does happen uh so you know we, we're looking at these sort of factors as well uh how well do they pay as well you know as businesses we all have cash flow um to worry about so we, we want to work with advertisers that are going to pay on time um so that's a key part of it too um I suppose other things be things like working codes. You know, it's codes need to work, otherwise our consumers have a bad experience. Um, so, and it takes time for us to then um, chase around telling the advertiser their codes don't work and getting a new one in. Um, so, working codes is important, and, and then the flexibility to create codes um, so that we have lots of exciting things to promote for them. You have your own requirements to be uh, advertisers, but the merchants have their own. Uh, requirements too. They they have their own, uh, um, you know, some. They they should have their own benefits uh, from working with coupon and discount sites. What are they? How do you think? Can you describe that? I think I think a key thing for retailer or for advertisers is to appreciate the um, the role that all publishers play in the consumer purchase funnel. Um, so, I mean, that, by that I mean the consumer seeing a brand or an offer for the first time all the way through to actually buying it. And obviously in affiliate marketing, um, you have a fantastic array of business models um, to, to work with different areas of the, of the funnel. And traditionally, you might everyone sort of thinks content sites are very good at attracting consumers. Um, and then cashback sites and voucher code sites are where consumers potentially convert. Uh, but it's really super important to, I think, realize, as we know from the data that we have been, that Admitad can share with us, that voucher codes play, a, or coupons, play a really important role at all stages of the funnel. Um, so the, the, the data that we have uh, from from you guys and other networks um, shows that, you know, for for the, the large, for the sales that we make in terms of the last click, where we do get paid, um, 50% again more sales um, can be generated further up the funnel so we won't necessarily get rewarded for that which is a shame but you know that's that's how it is um, but we are delivering clicks that may convert on other on other sites so you know we might have I think it's 20% of all of our clicks are introductory clicks that convert somewhere else like another vet like another site like another, another cashback site um, 30 percent um, of our sales were the penultimate click so the assisting click so someone's come onto our site seen a banner clicked on it so we can see the click um, but then they've gone somewhere else um, to actually make their sale so we're providing a really important brand consistency if you like um, throughout the purchase funnel and it's really important when I think when advertisers are uh, investing tenancies um, and deciding which publishers they want to work with to appreciate the strength of, of what voucher codes can bring to their overall consumer experience. And I think another good example of that is when a, when a consumer sees the voucher code box on the checkout page, um, and they you know, the, the traditional way of looking at that is that the consumer gets to the box and goes, oh, voucher, and off they go to find a voucher code um, and, and then come back. And the advertiser is saying, well, why should I pay for that? Because I had them. They were on my checkout page. And now I've got to pay commission to a voucher code site. Well, 
that advertiser expects us to faithfully represent their brand on our site um, while they're doing that. And so we play a crucial role in bringing that consumer back and not allowing them to find another advertiser or, you know, or a leak to a different channel. Um, so we play a very important role in, in all of that process. Yeah, especially the decision-making part, that's for sure. The other benefits um, that advertisers can can gain from working with us, obviously as, as a voucher code site, uh, we have a high level of traffic. Um, so that is something that advertisers are going to want to tap into. Um, and we can help them do that in lots of different sorts of ways. Um, we have things like emails um, and push notifications. Um, so we have a database of highly engaged subscribers and users that you know, have actively asked to engage with us and therefore our advertisers. Um, so that's a big, big way of doing it. Um, we have, can obviously also work with advertisers to, on multiple metrics, um, sometimes having more control over those than other sorts of, of publishers. Um, so average order value or basket stretching is a great example of that. We can host specific codes um, such as, you know, get 10% off if you spend £150. Um, so we, we can work with advertisers and understand their margins better to promote the right sort of advertiser, so the right sort of promotion to them. Um, we have things like, you know, new, new customer acquisition. Um, we have good, great conversion rates and we have things like single use codes as well. Um, to to get the absolute maximum benefit out of their budgets and whatever things they have at their disposal for us to work with. I think working with us specifically as well, um, we, as Jane will know, we do our absolute best to be flexible, fast and responsive. It's one of our, it's our three things. Um, we want to work, um, we want advertisers to look at us as the go-to team um, when they're looking to get away activity. So if you've got budgets or you've got codes, uh, having worked on both sides of the fence, I know how difficult it can be to get things away, um, especially within a tight deadline. Um, so we do our absolute best to come back to you as quickly as we can um, so that we're not a hassle to work with. You know, and then when you do have a great offer and you're thinking, who can I give to get it away? You think about us. Um, we obviously have our international reach, which is a great synergy with Admitad because uh, our footprints are very similar. Um, and we also do a lot of work with, as you said earlier, um, environmental sustainability. So this is a big core value for us internally. Um, we've made loads of changes within the business. Um, everyone is on board with it. Um, we do everything we can internally to promote this. And we now see it as our role to promote, to try and influence our stakeholders. Um, whether that's you guys as a network or our advertisers and obviously our consumers. Um, so our flagship event is, is Green Friday, um, which runs from Black Friday through to Christmas Day. Um, a special page that runs concurrently with our Black Friday and Cyber Monday page. Um, and over that period, um, we'll provide a space where advertisers can offer ethically minded consumers somewhere to you know meet basically and and buy ethically um, at the time of the year when, let's face it, it's all pretty crazy um, in terms of you know consumer behaviour. Uh, for every sale we make in that period, we plant a tree. Um, so we're up to about 360,000 trees so far, and obviously we're hoping this year to to increase that number significantly. I see that like voucher sites, they bring really a lot of benefits to advertisers, but. Um, I think uh, as a company, you would want to get your own benefit, right? So I would like to know how how do you how do you get your benefits while working with affiliate networks and with Admitad Affiliate in particular? We kind of earn uh, with Admitad in two main ways. So as Chris has mentioned earlier, our, the majority of our business is done around the CPA model, where we get paid a percentage of the yeah, of commission for each sale that we generate. And then the other way that kind of we generate mainly with Advitad is through fixed fees or tenancy or bonuses. However, you, you know, you understand paying us uh, a sum of money directly. So that's kind of our, our, our two main ways um, that we generate with Advitad. Do you actually think a CPA is efficient or like stable bonuses are better in work? What's your opinion? Uh, again, like... Um, 
I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. I, again, it kind of goes down to like a, a case by case basis and an advertiser by advertiser basis. And, you know, especially dependent on, on the way that the advertiser likes to work. So as Chris has mentioned before, uh, maybe smaller merchants who um, are new to the channel and don't command such a big kind of affiliate marketing budget to be kind of put towards voucher code sites, maybe starting on a CPA model and being paid or us being paid on a performance basis is a, is a good initial starting point. And then, you know, as, as the affiliate channel becomes uh, more sophisticated and more complex, you might start, um, you know, thinking about working to like an ROI or a uh, ROAS kind of um, system essentially. And you can think of uh, bonuses as either top ups or there's lots of ways to, to use a bonus and there's lots of ways to kind of apply that to us. Like, if you um, have a CPA basis uh, or if you have a CPA kind of strategy in place and you're looking to top up um, exposure on site, then you know normally you can allocate a little bit of extra money to kind of get more premium placements or something like that. That's kind of a strategy that lots of people do if they have like a, a key period which they're focusing around. Thank you for the answer. And um, I would like to point out that uh, actually, Brow Voucher is holding really uh, interesting and really useful events. As uh, for example, I can say that a Green June event um, that was a really, really um, good way for the advertisers to participate and to, uh, you know, to uh, have some good influence on the environmental sustain sustainability and so on and so forth. So um, I believe that we admit that from one side and Sabra Voucher from another side, we um, cooperate really in a fruitful way to help um, those advertisers to, you know, to uh, increase their brand awareness in such a good way, this uh, environmental, you know, kind of way. Uh, okay, and uh, if we are talking about the Admitat in particular, what are the advantages of our network? Could you describe them? Okay, so th there are loads of advantages to, to working, uh, you know, through the Admitat network. Number one, we've mentioned already that having a dedicated publisher development manager on the Admitat side of things really helps us kind of streamline um, the process of reaching out to uh, different advertisers and, you know, having somebody that's in the middle that has the visibility on the advertiser side of things it is a massive benefit for us, the publisher. And that kind of leads me on uh, to my second point as well, quite nicely, is the fact that the Admitad Network has a huge range of programs in loads of different verticals. So from our perspective, having Jane there to act as almost a lens, which we can focus our efforts through and say, you know, and also vice versa for the advertiser. Um, having a publisher de development manager there kind of just lets through the things that are most effective for both sides. So it really helps us kind of focus on uh, the types of advertisers and the advertiser to focus on us, the publisher that's going to work best one for the other. So as a kind of a partnership thing, you know, Jane acts is, is the bit in the middle, which links good advertisers to a good, to a good publisher, which is us. Um, also, uh, like a massive advantage of Advertad as well is they have a lot of international programs, which is fantastic. Obviously, you know, Bravo Voucher isn't just in the UK. Um, we're also present in, you know, eight other European markets and also the US. So that's extremely attractive to us as, uh, you know, as a network feature, the fact that, um, a program which Admitad has mean that we can onboard them across all of our sites in, in all of those different markets. So that's absolutely fantastic. Chris, is there anything you can add? <laughs> I think I'd, I'd echo um, most of what Rob says, really, so I won't, I won't labour it. But I think, I think what, we, what we certainly feel, um, especially this year, um, is that, uh, yeah, especially having you there, it means that we, we really genuinely feel that, that you guys are putting effort into our mutual growth. Um, so, you know, that that's really important for us. Yeah, it's uh, actually mutual from our side too, because um, I think our like cooperation got uh, really, really 
fruitful and beneficial for like the especially for the last year and I hope we will continue growing together and helping together to grow. Uh, okay, so uh, we have already discussed uh, the advantages of working with us. Uh, can you um, maybe give us some tips and uh, describe the points of improvement for our company, for the Admitad affiliate? Like I said before, I've worked both on the content side of things and also on the account manager side of things. And I think there's loads of like fantastic tools for, for both of those kind of areas of a business. But personally, something that uh, I would really like to see implemented is just like a little bit more uh, sophistication when it comes to reporting. I know um, for us, it's not necessarily a problem as we have kind of our own reporting tools, which just allows us to kind of either compare periods or have visualizations. But I'm thinking maybe for like kind of a smaller publisher that maybe doesn't have those type of resources to have those type of features, either kind of like a graphical representation of reports or maybe a, a period comparison would be really, really useful and something that, you know, could be a great benefit for, you know, both advertisers and publishers uh, in the future. Okay, thank you very much for your opinion. It is actually it is really helpful for us to to hear that from you because we're doing our best to improve our network and to help our advertisers and partners to grow together with us. And um, another question is, um, what can we do to help you to increase your profits? Because e Growth of your company is our growth as well, so it is really important for us. Chris, would you answer that, please? Yeah, um, I, mean, I think it, it dovetails neatly into stuff we've already talked about, um, and that is, you know, just keep on growing or helping us to grow our relationships um, with the you know, the advertiser, who's you know ultimately uh, where all of our revenues are coming from. Um, and I'm you know pleased to say that is something that that Amitad does really well for us. Like Rob was saying, you know, provides that lens um, for us to be able to work with the right advertisers. Um, and generally for affiliate networks, you know, that's that's what we want. You know, you either need to do that and do it well, um, or you need to have be very good at helping us make those introductions so that we can develop the relationships ourselves. Um, you know, obviously that's more, more we, we like doing that by the way, you know, um, but if we are in a situation where where the network is providing a really high level of engagement for us, um, then it means we don't necessarily need to. So just keep on doing that. <laughs> that really makes sense. Thanks for uh, thanks that you said such uh, pleasant words about our company. Uh, and finally, I've got this last question, last but not least, you know. Uh, could you please share with us three pieces of advice that you would give yourself at the very beginning of the affiliate marketing journey? Let's start with Chris. <laughs> um, okay, so I will... Um, it's such a long time ago for me. So you've had a lot of <laughs> um, experience. <laughs> I, I'll, 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 I'll keep it simple and I'll just do one and then, then I'll leave more for Rob. Um, the, the key thing, and I'll say to anybody that ever comes into any industry um, or any job, is just to ask lots of questions. Ask lots of questions and be super curious. And I think if I was going to reflect on when I first started, especially coming from one industry that's very well established, and I've been working in it for a number of years into a brand new industry, um, is, you know, people will assume that you know stuff. Um, and if you don't ask the right questions and you're not, and you, you, you know, you don't have any fear about doing that, um, you, it'll, it'll start to feel too late to ask those questions. Um, so my advice would be to ask lots of questions and remain curious, um, and keep learning. I see. Okay. And now I would love to hear your opinion, Rob, because you're still new in this industry and I think you've got a lot to say. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'd like piggyback off what Chris says and, you know, asking questions is extremely important, but I've been, I don't want to make Chris blush too much, but I've been extremely fortunate to, you know, be uh, teamed with someone who has so much experience. So ask the questions, but make sure you're kind of asking them to the right person and try and find somebody who's going to be like 
willing to answer those questions, like a mentor type figure or, you know, someone that really has like a deep and kind of wide knowledge base of lots of different parts of the industry. So they can give you not just like a tunnel vision, for example, us in voucher codes, um, but has lots of different experience across lots of different channels or just kind of affiliate marketing in general. And that's been like really important to my growth. Um, and it's probably helped me come up to speed a lot quicker than I would have uh, if I was just left on my own. Uh, so that's been extremely important to me. So yeah, first tip, find kind of like a mentor type figure that could, you can ask questions to and just annoy him all day on Google, on, <laughs> on Google chat. Um, the second one again <laughs> is because kind of affiliate marketing is such like a wide uh, and varied uh, industry. It's important not to have that tunnel vision like I just mentioned. So just be thinking about voucher codes and how that works specifically. It's really important that you at least know the basics of how kind of PPC works or how SEO works and how that affects your site or how that affects how you're earning money. Um, so I would say, yeah, try not to get too much tunnel vision and make sure you're, you're actively working to kind of understand how uh, different parts of affiliate work, uh, affiliate marketing work. And then the third one, um, really important as well is that um, although it seems big, affiliate marketing is actually quite a small uh, industry. Like you'll always see the same names and faces. Uh, maybe this is just a UK specific thing, but I'm sure it probably transfers across to some of the other markets as well. Um, is that you often see uh, the same names and faces kind of popping up somewhere. So maybe they'll leave uh, one company or they'll take up an affiliate marketing role in another company as well. So make sure you kind of um, grow and maintain your network and have a great range of contacts. And that kind of links into the other two two parts of you know my advice as well is that you'll have lots of people to ask questions to because they're always within the industry, um, and you'll always have lots of vision across like affiliate marketing in general. Even if they sidestep from maybe not account management into kind of a PPC role within affiliate marketing, um, and it just it helps you have that kind of three hundred and sixty vision of what's in, happening in the industry. One more quick question. What about networking? What, what's the best way of networking in affiliate marketing? Because right now you just said that affiliate marketing is a pretty small field, sphere of work. Well, I mean, most of the people that I've spoken to for the last year since I uh, came on board have seen me with the mask. So the first and most important thing is uh, to take, the, take my mask off and make sure everyone actually knows what I look like from here down. <laughs> um, but with that in mind as well, it's, it's so easy to be like uh, pigeonholed because, uh, you know, 90% of the time you're sitting in front of your laptops, like writing emails. Um, you know, affiliate marketing is all about relationships. So you need to kind of get on calls and you need to speak to people face to face if you can't go and see them in person. Um, but obviously, hopefully as the pandemic kind of, uh, you know, finishes and more like live events are taking place. For example, PI Live is happening soon uh, in the UK. And it's going to be the first time in a long time that we'll be able to go and, you know, reach out to our clients and, uh, you know, other people in the industry and kind of catch up and meet face to face. So you can either, you know, jump on calls if you can't see them face to face. Um, and also kind of uh, being active on places like LinkedIn and just being present, reading articles and kind of engaging with that uh, is super important. And, and that way you can kind of network as well. Great answer, Rolf. Uh, and I've got one more, I hope, last question. <laughs> uh, if some person who have just heard um, your amazing speech, your uh, amazing answers, uh, suddenly got the idea that, wow, I would like to try myself in the affiliate marketing, how much time will it take for this person to get into the sphere how do you think from your experience? Because you, you are not that long in this in this field, so maybe you can just give some tips to the newcomers. Uh, how long would it take to get operational? I mean, I probably consider myself like operational now after a year, but I think somebody who is extremely diligent and is like really working on it could easily get to grips with at least the basics within like. A month or two months and then once you've got kind of the idea about how the affiliate marketing industry works like what the relationships are like between advertisers network publishers agencies things like that 
then it becomes more of like um, the how and you know that takes a bit more time. But I would say anywhere between six months and a year to become operational and obviously quicker than that is, is definitely possible. Do you mean that uh, this person should become the part of uh, some team or should start the career by himself, you know, to uh, to be solo, kind of? Oh, uh, well, good question. I mean, it all depends on what that person's intentions are. But, you know, the, like, uh, as I mentioned before, the resources are there for if somebody wants to go solo, they can absolutely do that. Like if they want to start up like a blog or something like that, You know, that's absolutely doable and you can do that extremely quickly these days. Like the resources are there, so get going kind of almost straight away. Um, but then to kind of maybe work on an account management level at somewhere like Bravo Voucher where we have, you know, almost 2,000 accounts and it's understanding who works where and, you know, what relationships are, how we can work with them, you know, and it's kind of learning the account, if you see what I mean, and that takes a bit more time. But yeah, if somebody wants to self-start, then, you know, Why not do it immediately? Just just go for it. That's what I would say. I think I'll add to that for the for, in the, for the UK specifically, um, but I'm sure it's the same in many markets uh, because of the COVID pandemic um, and the effect that's had on workforces. Um, in the UK, we've had a lot of people on furlough, um, and people have had career changes. Uh, so I think there is there's a lot of opportunity at the moment for people to get into affiliate marketing. It's, it's one of those industries which isn't sort of hugely known. Very few people go to university to do affiliate marketing. You know, they might hear about it as a module in their marketing course, maybe. You know, so uh, I, think, I think there's probably a lot more we can do as an industry to, to grow our brand and attract talent. Um, but there's a lot of um, opportunity out there at the moment because of the amount of um, businesses that are now looking to affiliate marketing to help them grow and recover um, from the last you know, two years of, of economic uncertainty. So, um, you know, the, the, it's just about looking for the job um, and, and, and making sure they apply. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. I think it be really useful for some, you know, some young publishers <laughs> who want to start their own career in this, um, in this field. Okay, Chris, uh, you've just mentioned that uh, because of pandemic is becoming popular, but um, when all the restrictions are being lifted, uh, do you think affiliate marketing and all this sphere is still going to work or do you think it might go down? Yeah, ab no, absolutely. I mean, in the UK, affiliate marketing has been growing year on year for as long as I can remember. Um, so, you know, there, there is no, there's definitely no let up in that trend um, and we do know that uh, that the flight to e-commerce if you like um, over the last two years when people haven't been able to um, to sell through their traditional bricks and mortar outlets um, has seen I think we've 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 accelerated um, the, the move to online by five years in the UK um, and now the high streets are, are you know are struggling to to re-establish themselves and we're seeing you know the the people on the high street um looking at trying to recreate what they do so that there's a much better experience to give people a reason to go back into the shops because it's so easy now to shop online um so i don't think we're going to see this slow down anytime soon um and because affiliate marketing has such low barriers to entry you know you don't need huge budgets like you would in display Um, or even in even in PPC, um, then you know it's something that even smaller businesses can access um, and and get into the get into it as long as they're realistic about their returns. There. Thank you very much for taking your time and uh, having this conversation with with us. It was a great pleasure to meet you. It was great to speak to you guys as well. Uh, if anyone that's listening has any questions, then obviously I'm here. So just shoot me a, uh, an email or a message on LinkedIn afterwards. And uh, thank you very much for your time and thanks for listening.